Well, first, I've wanted to, to ask you about going back for a sequel. I mean, when you did the first one, could you see that, that this was going to go off and kind of go into a sequel, given the, and see the kind of success that it was going to have? Honestly, I wasn't aware of that. I'm sure Matthew and Jane and Mark Miller were aware of the potential, because obviously it comes from a comic originally. And, um, you know, comic books are spawning film after film at the moment, so I'm sure they were aware of it, but I, I hadn't really considered that. Uh, but it's been fantastic that there, you know, that there is one. Well, you, you must have been excited as well that they like, gave you a call and said, we're gonna you know, give you all this stuff to do in the second one, and we're gonna go to America, and we're gonna kind of expand the, the whole story a bit Yeah, sure. actually, having said that, I, I realized that I, I, well, I wasn't aware there was a sequel. We did, I did sign up for more than one. So I think my agent was aware that there might be more than one. I hadn't really considered it. But the fact that he came back with something, I think, that ticks all the boxes of the first one, which you have to do with the sequel, but takes it somewhere else, is really clever. Because often sequels are disappointing, aren't they? The, the, the surprise factor that you get from the first one. No one really knew what Kingsman was when they saw it. Well, now they do. So now they're expecting something. So you have to take it to a, another level. And he does that. I think the introduction of all the American characters and meeting the statesman is a stroke of genius. A lot of people talk about uh, Colin and Taryn's relationship in the movie, but I found you, uh, your relationship with Taryn in this movie particularly interesting as well because he's kind of like his, kind of like the Alfred figure in a sense of Batman. Yeah. He's the surrogate father figure. Did you enjoy yeah. that kind of dynamic between the two of you? Absolutely. I mean, I realised subsequently there's a sort of uh, dysfunctional family vibe going on with Harry and Merlin as parents, and uh, Eggsy as their as their the one they take care of as their son, if you like. Um, all good movies have that at their core as well. You need to have some sort of uh, family connection or bond between the people that you're watching, especially if they're going on the run, which obviously they are in this one. Their whole world has been destroyed, so now they've got to go and work out what to do about it. Yeah. I guess you obviously worked with Matthew a few times before. What is it about him that makes him such a kind of unique filmmaker that all his movies are so entertaining but also have so much heart and he's, he manages to find that balance so, so well? I think it's his combination of taste, tenacity, and his understanding of what people really enjoy watching in a cinema. You think of all those films he's made, Layer Cake, Stardust, Kick-Ass, X-Men First Class, and now a couple of Kingsmen. I mean, they're all really good movies. Um, so he, he kind of, you know, he knows what he's doing, but I think he also knows, as I say, what people want to go and see. Uh, also in this one, you got to work with Halle Berry, which must have been great. You, you two kind of tech tech wizards together in, yeah, in yeah. that one. I mean, that must have been in itself such an exciting opportunity for you to go and work with someone like her. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, turning up on set every day and, you know, hanging out with Halle and doing all of that was, was great. There was more in the original cut, which was about four hours long or something ridiculous, oh, wow. there was more of a kind of love interest between the two of them. They bonded over John Denver and the Muppets, bizarrely. But that had to go, I think, in favour of kind of keeping the film lean and moving along. But it did mean that, um, you know, I got to sort of come to work every day and be in love with Halle Berry, which is, uh, you know, it's not so job. bad. <laughs> and a bit of singing as well. And was a bit that, of singing as was well. That, was that difficult, having to do the accent as well? Obviously not to give anything away, but... No, no, not really. I think it lends itself to a sort of Scottish vibe, don't you? The yeah. Highlands and yeah. all of that. It's a sort of, uh, you take the law road, I take the high road or whatever it is. It's, it's that sort of vibe. And Country Roads, I think, works for a Scot as much as it does for a, an American. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Matthew is such a uh, one of those directors that so many people want to kind of work with these days, and he's been drawn to so many different projects. One of which was reverting back to comic books with maybe doing a Superman movie. Yeah. Um, in a kind of theory-based world, I mean, is that something that you'd be interested in? Obviously, I know that people have mentioned you about Alex Luthor. I know the cast Alex Luthor, but mm. if he was to do it, and it was a scenario where you could do that, is that something that would appeal to you? Totally. I mean, I, I'd work with Matthew any time. I've had such a great time doing the movies with him that I've done. And they're all completely different genres, you know, Stardust, Kick-Ass and this, very, all very different. Maybe Kick-Ass and Statesman share a sort of comic book vibe, but uh, yeah, when, when you kind of have a relationship with a director like that, you, you, you don't do the dance with them on a movie. That's how I describe it. You know, when you meet a new director on your work, you have to kind of work out where you're going to put your feet and how you're going to work together. We just hit the ground running now because um, I know him so well. We've become friends. So, you know, anything he wants to do, I, I'd, I'd definitely be there. 
and you've got a Fox TV show, which you're doing now, or you're about to go and do. Just that finished it, just finished it. How exciting was that to have a, to be in TV and have a, like a whole series? Great, because, you know, TV, there's a lot of people flocking to TV. The, all the best writers are, seem to go there because they can develop characters. A lot of actors are doing it because they understand you can develop characters over 8, 10, 13 hours instead of 90 minutes. It just makes sense because you can do, you can really get engaged with storytelling. And uh, Fox wanted to make um, something themselves, you know, they funded it themselves. Normally they buy stuff in, but this is the first thing that they've actually funded. And I, I wanted to be kind of in with that because they're behind it, they support it. It was a really fantastic uh, script um, set in Tehran, Beirut, the Lebanon. It was all about spies, skullduggery, but a really big family element at the core. And uh, when all you can do is when you read a script, if you're turning the page, uh, which I did with this, um, is hope that that translate to, translates to the screen. And I think it has done with, with uh, Deep State, it's called. So Brilliant I'm stuff. very hopeful. Well, congratulations on this one. I hope it's a big success for you. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, yeah, Thank no, you. pleasure. pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, hey.